the rightly guided one, that's what it means to the Muslim, the name Mahdi, the twelfth Imam. And if you if you study about Muhammad and what happened in Hakim Tafari, you'll understand what those where those terms come from. But that's what they're waiting for. That's what it would take. <laughs> the book of Revelation has been written some almost 2,000 or 2,000 years ago, about 2,000 years ago, and it predicted this stuff. The book of Daniel was written 500 plus years before the book of Revelation. They go, they jive perfectly, talking about the same things. God, through the angel Gabriel, gave a lot of insight and understanding to Daniel. He sent that five-star general who stands in the presence of God to Daniel to let him know what was going to happen in his day and in the future time. And then he gave more precise revelation, some 500-something years later, to the Apostle John. And he had him write the book of Revelation, and he gave him more insight. We got more understanding. So this Antichrist guy is going to be something. And the Muslim world... When he finally comes in and says, I'm the Mahdi, <laughs> they're going to believe it. That's what it would take for them to sign a seven-year peace treaty. It's going to happen. That's what they're waiting for. That's what they're waiting for. And under his leadership, if you study the, some of the Muslim writings and what they're after, they know that one day they're going to destroy the Jewish people first and then the Christians. They believe Jesus will be personally in charge of the annihilation of the Jewish people. They see him as a prophet, but they believe he was just playing the part. He's going to come back, and he's going to see to it that all the Jews are destroyed. That's how they see Jesus. And that's what they're waiting for. Why do you think Iran is saber-rattling so much? They have uh, the Shia Muslims, there's different groups. The Sunnis are probably the biggest. There's the Shia, there's other smaller groups. But the Shia Muslims uh, have a, a, a militant threat in them. And, and too many of their leaders, I want to say, I'll stay, I'll stay with too many of their leaders, believe that if a war starts, it's a good thing because that'll cause the hidden Imam or the Mahdi to show up. That'll be the beginning of the end for the Jews and the Christians and then they'll attain world domination. That's what it's about. Satan has wanted world domination. If you, if you, say, you go back to the Egyptian empires and all the, uh, the, the, the empires that came after them, the Assyrians, the Medes, the, the Persians, the, the, the Greeks, the Babylonians, and, and the uh, Roman empires and all of the empires after that. Uh, you think of the, the Mongols. Uh, you, you think of uh, what was some of the other empires. The Spanish Empire tried to take over. Uh, Hitler tried to take over the world. The Japanese Empire wanted to take over the world. Everybody wants to take over the world. None of them has ever succeeded. Satan is always after kingdoms, anyone that they can, to take, everybody wants to take over the world. Antichrist will want to take over the world too. There ain't nobody taking over the world but Jesus Christ when he comes back at the second coming. That's what the Bible says. God won't allow it. God's going to allow, allow a lot during the tribulation period. As I said, I believe it's going to be hell on earth when you read about the two times that all these weird animals being. Revelation 9 talks about the earth, the abyss opening up and all of these creatures and smoke come out of it. And then later on uh, scorpion type things. He's going to let demonic activity come on the earth to torment men. There's going to be famine at one time uh, a third of the world's population is going to be killed. And then from the remaining uh, a fourth of them will be killed. God's going to allow. That's in his plan. That's in his will to happen. He's going to allow all you know, the main reason I think God's going to allow all that, all that, He wants to bring Israel back to its senses, wants to bring Israel back to God. Yeah. And the second one is to punish a Christ-rejecting world. Yeah. God is just. When you do something, you go to a court, you don't go so the, so the judge can give you mercy. You go, that's not His job. His job, I've said this many times, is to give you justice. 
That's the law. His job is to see that you get justice. You did something wrong, there's a penalty. That's his job to see that that's done. He may have discretion at times to give you, a, to show some mercy. God has a lot of discretion to show mercy. But God's mercy only comes one way. And that's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you do it God's way, he'll forgive whatever. That's how powerful the blood of Jesus is. Outside of that, you don't get God's grace. You don't get God's mercy. You get God's judgment. Man, Pastor, you preaching black and white. Yeah. That's the Bible. I use the Bible. Thank you, Lord. That's the Bible. Yes. That's the truth. Come on. Come Why are we telling people silly things? Yeah. Hell is real. If, he if hell's not real, heaven is not real. Jesus talked, I think, more about hell than heaven. Why? So we don't go. So we can see that that's why he came and was born of a virgin and, and took on flesh. And so without sinning for 33 years, so he can go to a cross sinless and pay the price for man's sin. So those who would believe could miss that ugly place, hell, and make that wonderful place, hell. So as ugly as things are, we, we see what it is. So, so we don't have to go. <laughs> I mean, that's a good deal. I don't have to buy it. I don't have to earn it. I just have to believe it and accept Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Because believing the way people use the word believing is not enough. But James said even the devils believe and they tremble, but they can't get saved. So we, have, we believe. I've had people, I've shared the gospel with some people, crying this close to getting saved. I say, you believe all? Yeah, I believe it. Okay, now, you have to ask God to forgive you of your sins and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Let's do that right now. They were as close as you get. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. Believe it not enough. You got to do something about what you believe. Amen. Got to receive Jesus. Then you move from God's judgment to God's mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what, that's what the cross and the shed blood of Jesus is all about. Mercy. 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 Thank God. The blood of Jesus. So, when the Mahdi shows up, the Mahdi don't say, I'm him. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some scriptures with you. This man would possess remarkable oratory ability as a result of demonic anointing. We talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's when He comes upon us somehow and enables us to go beyond ourselves, either to speak or to say something or to do something under His power. We call that the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Well, the devil can do some anointing too. Have you ever seen documentaries on Adolf Hitler? Have you ever seen some of the speeches translated in English? The man wasn't saying anything profound. That's all he was saying. That was it. But it was anointed. I've seen in documentary some of the people that were there for some of the speeches that were young at the time and now they're older people. And they said it was riveting. Some of the women said it would make them weep. It was so riveting, so powerful. He was under the anointing of an evil spirit. And the people said you just feel it. You can just feel something in the air. It's demonic anointing. And he could speak, and all we get to hear is, you know, you see it in documentaries, and he sounds like, wow! Yeah. It wasn't what he had to say. Like I said, if you hear it translated, then the English word dubbed in, it wasn't any big deal. But being there and having it, and hearing that, and being in the presence, you're in the presence of some de demon spirits. And as a result of people listening to him, anywhere from 50 to 60 million people, depending on the, uh, the uh, historian that you hear from, died. Not to mention the main and the devastation and, and, the, and the money that was spent to, to, to rebuild all the devastation. So he would get that kind of oratory ability from Satan. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians, the coming of the lawless one, it's another name for him, is according to the working of Satan. How many know that Satan has power to do miracles? Satan was the anointed cherub. 
I mean, just one angel. Angels are powerful beings. More powerful than we really understand or even most Christians that I've heard talk, even, even preachers, they well, you know, angels and they're powerful. And then a cherub, it's a high ranking, almost like a super angel. And he was one of the top generals in heaven. That's who Lucifer was. He still has some power left. He was kicked out of heaven, but God didn't remove all of his power. All the devastation that goes on in the earth, all of the wars, all of the horrors, all of the deeds that we, that we hear about. That. How can people do that? Satan and his demons. He's the leader. Jesus said Satan has a kingdom. Well, you can't have a kingdom without people to rule. He rules demons. And they do his bidding or else. He's a hard taskmaster. The coming of the lawless one is according to the work of Satan. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. That's 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 9. What? The working of Satan? With all power? The power that Satan has available to him, he'll make available to the Antichrist. Signs and lying wonders. That's, that's miracles. He'll be able to perform miracles. The book of Revelation 13 talks about that also. The Antichrist will convince the Muslim nations. Listen, to, here's, here's how he's going to do some of it. Antichrist will convince the Muslim nations to allow Israel to build their new Jewish temple. You see, Israel, ever since 70 AD, okay, when the Roman legions under Titus, the Roman general, went in there and destroyed the city and destroyed, completely destroyed the temple, they don't have a temple to offer blood sacrifices. Really, Judaism ceased to exist when the temple was destroyed because Judaism requires the blood of animals to be shed, to be offered through a high priest. They don't have that. Ever since then, they have moved everything over to the synagogue, like their local churches. But the synagogue is not the temple. And there are no blood sacrifices. So they need a temple. They have to have a temple. Everybody knows that, and especially the Muslims know that. The Antichrist will know that. The Jewish temple will be built in the biblically required area. You can't just build a Jewish temple anywhere, not the temple, because they believe that Messiah will come back to the Jewish nation and rule from that temple. So you can't build it anywhere. The required biblical area is the area of the Dome of the Rock. Yeah. You've seen that big mosque there. It's the third most holy Muslim site in the world. How are you going to build the temple there? You can't build it anywhere. Some, I bought, I don't know how many documentaries on it by archaeologists and professors and Bible this uh, scholars. And some say it's right exactly where the Dome of the Rock is built. Some say it's just a little bit north of it where they have a little thing that was built. Others say no, because of some of the scriptures in the Bible, it's to the, to the south of that still area. To build anywhere in that area <laughs> would not be allowed by the Muslim world. Listen. Any attempt by Israel in the past to have built on this site or now, or now attempt to build without this prophesied seven year uh, agreement, okay, any attempt would trigger an immediate war against Israel by the Muslim nations. That's why Israel hasn't tried to build there. They'll be attacked immediately. It's the Muslim, you know, it's the third most holy site. And when you got over a billion people on the planet, 120 million militant, ready to do whatever, uh, Israel would do well not to attempt to build. But there is a prophesied seven year period that will allow them to build a temple. So, Antichrist, see I believe this, these ten nations will already be in power will already be there. Then from among them, a guy is going to come up that Satan's going to anoint and give oratory skills and work with and finally begin to give him power to do miracles. Revelation 13 says he's going to give him a helper. 
Okay, you've heard, you've heard about him, the false prophet. And he's and they're going to do miracles to deceive the people that he is from God. That God is working in him. That he is Mahdi. So these ten nations, he's going to tell them, when he says we need a treaty with them, they're going to say, no, it's in their DNA because of so many years. It's in the, the Muslim culture. But he says, I have a plan. Watch out when the devil has a plan, especially if it makes sense. His best plans make sense. So he convinces these ten nations, the leaders of it, and of course the leaders pass it down to the constituency, if you will, and says, let's let them build a temple there. We don't have to knock down the Dome of the Rock. They can just build it next to it. And if, if it turns out that it has to be on the Dome of the Rock, it's okay. We'll knock it down for them. We'll give them permission. And since he's the Mahdi now, they'll listen to him. He'll deceive them. But he makes a promise to them. He says, here's the deal. We make a seven-year peace treaty with them, but in the middle of the seven years, we'll go on and destroy them. We'll destroy them. 